The following is a reflection on the readings for Tuesday of the 19th week of Ordinary Time. Our first reading is taken from Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 8 to chapter 3, verse 4, the responsorial from Psalm 119, and the gospel from Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 5, 10, and 12 to 14. For the next two weeks, our first reading will be taken from the book of Ezekiel. He was a prophet and a priest who ministered in Babylon between the years 593 and 571 B.C. as an exile, that is, as one of the many Jews taken in captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar. He was a contemporary of the prophet Jeremiah who ministered in Jerusalem from the years 626 to 586 B.C. Ezekiel spoke God's word to the captives in Babylon with much the same message as the other prophets, that is, turn away from sin, especially idolatry, social injustice, and immorality. His message was often couched in dramatic language, deriving from apocalyptic visions received from the Lord. Today's reading is from the beginning of Ezekiel's ministry and depicts his role as a prophet as God tells him to eat a scroll that contained words of lamentation, mourning, and woe. The fact that the scroll was written on both sides indicated the magnitude of judgment about to be rendered on God's sinful people. Ezekiel obeys and eats the scroll, which is sweet to the taste. His digesting of God's word means that he was assimilating the message and making it his own so that he could convey that message to the people. There are similar incidents in Scripture of consuming the word of God, such as in Revelation chapter 10, when John the Apostle is told by an angel to eat a little scroll before prophesying the message of God. Again, the scroll is sweet to the taste, but soon turned sour to the stomach, indicating a difficult message of judgment. The lesson and challenge for us today is clear. In baptism, we become prophets of God's word. Thankfully, we have available this word in sacred scripture and sacred tradition. But have we pondered over these sacred texts in such a way that they become internalized and part of us? When we take the time, do we delight in the message so that it becomes sweet to the taste? Are we edified by that word so that it forms us for ministry? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, St. Paul states, quote, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. In order for this correction, rebuking, and training for righteousness to take place, we must be humble enough to allow the process. This means being willing to defer our own presumption and opinion to the superior message of God, treating God's word as a priceless treasure worthy of our time. This was the attitude of today's psalmist taken from Psalm 119. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. Your decrees are my delight, they are my counselors. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. With open mouth I pant, because I long for your commandments. Again, humility is the key. In today's gospel, Jesus, having been asked who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, takes a child and says, Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Why is humility important? We see in the first reading the catastrophic results pride brings upon the people of God who stubbornly close their hearts to Ezekiel's message of repentance. Not only are they taken into captivity by their enemies, the city of Jerusalem falls and the temple is destroyed as well the role God gave Israel to bring his teaching and identity as the only true and living God to the nations, fails. The same obstacle is present when God sends his son, the word, born in a humble stable as a defenseless child. When Jesus begins his ministry, hearts are closed to his teaching 
because Israel in its pride is expecting a conquering king who will displace Rome and restore Israel to its former greatness. What, however, was Jesus' message to his people? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is why Jesus begins his Sermon on the Mount with, Blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. When St. Paul reflects on Christ reversing the original sin of Adam and Eve, pridefully grasping at divinity by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he refers to a very early hymn which portrays Christ as not grasping at divinity, but making himself of no reputation, taking on the nature of a servant and humbling himself in obedience to death, even death on a cross and encouraging us to have the same attitude, being of like mind. Philippians chapter 2 One way we do this is, instead of grasping for our own ideas of right and wrong, or the world's current opinion, we take God's word of scripture and sacred tradition into our hearts every day, and make it our own. As St. Paul encouraged the Colossians by stating, Let the word of God dwell richly within you, Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, so may we also be encouraged, realizing that the word of God in us can be powerful and have an influence on others.